Hello everyone, quick disclaimer. At the beginning of this episode, Pat's mic had a bit of an issue. There's like this small humming noise, but it's not throughout the entire episode. We fix it like five minutes in, so just bear with it for a little bit. Anyways, enjoy. Hello and welcome to the 27th episode of Fresh Off The Reel. My name is Everything. And my name is Pat from the Multiverse, who decided to get more than three hours of sleep. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with everywhere. No. <laughs> but mine was also a joke about the movie. <laughs> so You know what? It, it fits in. And this week, we watched the, the sleeper hit, Everything Everywhere All at Once, that came out under the radar on April 1st, that I legitimately thought was a shitpost. Uh, yeah, I, I did not hear about this movie at all until uh, Lib mentioned it when we were talking off camera. It's really good. The way I found out about this movie is because I, I was I was with my friends and I was talking about like, oh yeah, on Letterboxd, Parasite is the number one highly, highly highest rated film. And then I, I then I was like, I went on the list to show them, and then everything everywhere all at once was there. I was like, what the fuck is this? It came out yesterday. It came out on the same day as uh, also sleeper hit to Morbius. <laughs> it did actually, yeah. That movie I said I wasn't gonna talk about that I never did. <laughs> We're never going to. No, no, but I, I made a joke like I'll talk about it next time because I can't convince Lib to watch it, and then I didn't talk about it next time. Oh well. Sucked. <laughs> I'm sure it did. <laughs> but it's gonna sell one trillion tickets. Peak Fiction Cinema. This movie was. Directed by Daniel Scheinert and Daniel Kwan. I can't pronounce uh, the first one's name. They go by the Daniels. That's their uh, duo. Famous directors of the Turn Down For What <laughs> music video. <laughs> or uh, uh, if you know Swiss Army Man, which is a very strange movie. Yeah, I think that's the one people are going to know more than that. <laughs> a turn down for what music video which i i'm still like not 100 percent sure if you're lying about it, but it's way too specific for it to not be true look it up <laughs> look it up i'm being serious well it, it's like i found out recently that the the director of the sonic movie and the producer of the sonic movie both worked on the uh, shadow the hedgehog opening cutscene <laughs> Yeah, the so one like, where all, he like, cocks this. a gun at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so like you know what? If that's true, I'm sure. I'm sure the turn down for what music video thing is also true. Also, this is confirmation that Shadow's gonna have a gun. Stay, <laughs> <laughs> take that as you will. All right, so I'm gonna read the synopsis here. Oh, this is from Letterboxd. New year, new universe. An aging Chinese immigrant is swept up in an insane adventure where she alone can save the world by exploring other universes connecting with the lives she could have led. Unfortunately, this sweeps her up into an even bigger adventure when she finds herself lost in the infinite worlds of the multiverse. So yes, this is a multiverse movie. You don't see many of those anymore after uh, Marvel took over. <laughs> yeah, eat your heart out, Marvel. This is a multiverse movie, and god damn it, it's better than whatever you're doing. <laughs> it really is. Marvel needs to take some notes. Every movie needs to take some notes because this is actually my new favorite film. This beat Rogue One. <laughs> yeah, this is his favorite movie of all time. This is my new favorite movie of all time. I think it's the best movie I've ever seen. It was really good. It's, it's one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. Um, we watched this movie together. Uh, this is our first uh, first theater movie together since like Black Widow. <laughs> so that was fun. No, not since Black Widow. Since since Free Guy. Oh, since Free Guy. Black Widow was the first one we've seen. <laughs> it's, it's it's been a while. But yeah, we saw this together. Uh, we both had no idea what to expect going into it, and we both walked out very very impressed. It is a great great movie. If you haven't seen it or you haven't heard about it, please please go watch it. If you are listening to this podcast. And you haven't seen this movie yet? Pause this episode, watch a different one, and then go watch this movie. Because you cannot get spoiled on this movie. Yeah, we will be spoiling it. We will be talking about it. This movie needs to kind of just be experienced. It's it's pretty impossible to talk about this movie without going into spoilers. So, spoiler territory starting right now. Go watch this movie if you haven't seen it already. And if you have seen it already, watch it again because it's amazing. I think this is a shoe in for Best Picture. I think so. 
I know we're only in uh, in April at the time. Well, yeah, at the time of this coming out as well, it'll still be April. We're only in April, um, but I think this is 100% going to be on the the best picture list. There's a couple other categories I think this is also a shoe in for, but uh, th- this is just great. And this is also a movie I think the Academy would love. Like, it is weird. It's very weird, and the Academy doesn't always like weird, but I, I definitely see the, the Academy liking this one. Uh, plus, Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. Everyone likes Jamie Lee Curtis. If you remember when we reviewed Halloween, we talked about how every Jamie Lee Curtis movie is in one big continuity. Uh, this movie proves it. This Ooh. movie is the gr- is the anchor of that theory because it's a multiverse movie, so that opens it up. Jamie Lee Curtis, all of her movies are in the same universe. This movie takes place in the the well, the main universe of this movie takes place in the universe where Jamie Lee Curtis wasn't attacked by Michael Myers as a child. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes place in another universe where where Jamie Lee Curtis wasn't birthed by a rich author who got stuck into a whodunit mystery. It's all connected, man. It's all connected. <laughs> all right, so let's talk cinema. So this this movie is is a comedy. It's it's actually really funny. Like w- when we went to to the theater, uh, a lot of times the the people were laughing. I haven't been in a I haven't seen a funny movie in the theaters in a while. That be like after we just said we saw Free Guy and I don't remember our theater ever laughing at any of the jokes in Free Guy. Yeah, I I, I, I don't like we did. I remember, I remember laughing in the theater. I think like all three of like we went with another friend and we all did. But I don't remember moments where like the theater like was straight up just like laughing all out. This one this one though people were laughing. This this is classified as a sci-fi adventure comedy. So if if those are genres you like, this this definitely should be on your list. I mean, this this was funny. I, I I there's a lot of jokes here that I think like really really landed well, which I was surprised about because um like we had both said last time in here, we both went into this with like as little information as possible. I think Lib, you said you saw the trailer, right? Like you had seen one trailer. I saw an ad on Instagram. Not an ad. It was it was like a thirty second thing. You saw an ad and I saw like nothing. I hadn't I hadn't seen anything before going into this, so I wasn't expecting a comedy and I wasn't expecting to laugh like out loud, and I was pleasantly surprised. I think it was really really fun. Hey guys, sorry to cut in again, but at this point we actually stopped the original recording, fixed Pat's problem, and then started recording again. So the humming is completely gone, and I promise this is the last time I interrupt. Also, I found it really funny. That Pat said this episode is coming out in April. It's May. That's fun. Technical difficulties. I hardly know her. Yeah. Woo. That's a that was a funny one, Pat. Good joke. You could you could, you could slap this. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna slap this right in right after I said we're gonna talk about the movie. Slap gonna, it right in. You're gonna slap at me like I'm Chris Rock. I'm. <laughs> 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 okay where the fuck were like so yeah we've been having technical difficulties for the last like 10 minutes uh so i just decided to we're gonna keep that in because <laughs> it's funny yeah, well, fuck it it's it's funny it's, sometimes you have to make the audience laugh it's okay yes yeah, and some and you know what it's so fitting <laughs> yeah like the, the 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 weird movie is is the one that uh, has all the fucky the fucky fucks the fucky fucks all right, so let's actually talk about the movie. If you guys hear a humming on Pat's end, I am very sorry. <laughs> let's hope we don't have to scrap this episode. You know, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't hear it anymore. <laughs> okay, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> all right, let's get this show on the road. So the movie, everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay, so the movie starts. Uh, we get these like the, we introduce to these characters. They're Chinese. This is important because the movie is about a Chinese mother, uh, and you know, like she's like very distant with her her daughter, and her daughter's just trying to get approval. You know, it's it's a very heartwarming story, actually. I think at at the core of this movie is it's just like this this family who's trying to make the best out of a situation they put themselves in, like like. Everything that led led um, led this family to the point that they're at in the start of this movie is is like it's the consequences of their actions. It, it is it is their fault why they're here. 
like the the main character is is a mother of a mother and a wife who is unhappy like well, basically 100% with everything in her life they own a um a, uh, a laundromat a, la- a laundromat and she like she a laundromat that she started with her husband when they moved away to America when they were like young and like her father disowned her and everything but that's the decision she wanted to make with the person she loved and we 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 cut back to her like like 20 or 30 years later and she's just unhappy and and i think that's where like the the mul- like the, where they use the multiverse aspect of things really interestingly because like the whole question in this movie that like she's asking herself is like what if i didn't go all those years ago with my husband right in this weird like multiverse adventure we kind of get to see bits and pieces of that and it's really interesting yeah there's the there's the big the big thing is that in almost every other universe she's better off without her husband she's better off without her husband and like all the universes where they don't end up together yeah but but and this is like a, a big a big reveal later at the end of the movie Ooh, spoiler we knows because like the whole movie she's led to believe that oh like these lives are better because i never met my husband like in one universe she's like a a live chef at this super fancy restaurant and another one she's this martial arts actress a yeah, famous martial arts actress and she's super rich in another one, she's married to Jamie Lee Curtis and has hot dog fingers. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we'll talk <laughs> about that one. And then, yeah, and like, you're led to believe, like, at the time, that, oh, she's happy in all these universes because she doesn't meet her husband and she doesn't move to, to America. To, like, to, to America to work in a laundromat. Like, that's what you're led to believe until, like, the end, basically. Where, like, in the end, in most of those universes... She ends up finding her way back to her husband in some form, or Jamie Lee Curtis in the hot dog one, who's supposed to be like the stand-in for her husband in in, in that universe. And it's I don't know, it's like it's it's it's, it's something you really need to watch and experience. It's really like well crafted. I hate how well crafted this is with how like wacky, batshit, insane the concept is. Right? This is a doomsday multiverse movie. That has this super fucking heartwarming story about yeah. this woman coming to terms with the fact that, like, even if, like, even if she's like her life is shit, she could still find happiness in it. And then she also has this like the the main story, like the the main villain is is like has to do with her daughter and her relationship with her daughter, and the fact that they have this this heartwarming story in the same movie where. Um, a man like pulls out a fanny pack and uses it in kung fu to beat up a bunch of police officers. <laughs> it's just crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, so it turns out that her husband, in a different universe where she's dead, is like the leader of this group that multiverse jump to try and kill the uh, the this like multiverse master god. god. I forgot yeah. the name that they use. And in this universe, before she died, she created multiverse travel technology. <laughs> yeah. Which is a huge contrast to the version, like, the main universe, where she's just a laundromat employee, the owner. And the, 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 like, god of the multiverse that's trying to destroy the multiverse is her daughter. She's, like, an amalgamation of, her, of different versions of her daughter, who all hate her mother for basically the same reasons, because her mother, like doesn't want to understand them yeah because the, 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 she's very what, what's her name we keep saying her mother the daughter evelyn yeah, they, have, they, they do have names it's like it's like evelyn joy joy is the daughter evelyn is the the mother i don't remember the husband's name waymond waymond the dude from indiana jones yes because that was the backup if we stopped calling him the husband i was gonna call him the kid from indiana jones yeah uh he's short round in indiana jones the temple of doom it's him He's all grown up now. All I'm saying is, if if after watching that fanny pack scene, he he could play in D. <laughs> I'm down for it. Uh, actually, fun fact: the lead for this movie was supposed to be Jackie Chan, but uh, the director. Really? Yes, I didn't know that. But the directors thought that it would be better if it had a female role because of the mother daughter relationship, and then they're like, okay, Jackie Chan will be the husband. But then they just they casted um, uh, Kehoi Kwan instead. He's really good. I have to say, like his performance, he's very like, good. Yeah, the performances in this movie overall are fantastic. I don't think there's a single performance in this entire movie that isn't like top notch. Jamie Lee Curtis is great. The main trio is great. Evelyn's father, I can't remember her name. His name, 
is fantastic as well. They just call him Gong Gong. Gong Gong? Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's fantastic. Like, th- this movie, like, like again, I-, I said this already, but for-, for what it is, it's too good. Like, they took <laughs> this wacky, this wacky concept and they just made, like, they made cinema. It's just, it's full of phenomenal performances, phenomenal fight choreography, phenomenal editing. The costume design is fantastic. This movie's just great. Everything in this movie is almost perfect, except for the hot dog fingers. That was weird. <laughs> hot dog fingers, like, it's a, it's intentionally weird. Like, it's supposed to be weird, right? Yeah. And even, like, um, the, ma- the main characters, when they learn about the hot dog universe, they're weirded out, too. But it, it, but like it, it fits in a weird way. The hot dog fingers fit, but it's really uncomfortable to watch. So in the in the story, the way that Evelyn f- finds out about the multiverse and everything is that the alternate universe Waymond comes to her when they're in an elevator, and like he tells her all this shit, this super weird blah 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 superhero movies things that oh, they always do this in the origin story. So to to multiverse jump, you have to do something weird. That'll like, <laughs> like if so, you have to you have to figure out what multiverse, what universe you want to go to. You're a universe where you're a martial artist, or a universe where you're a chef, whatever. So you think about that, and then you have to do something weird that'll weird out the multiverse, and then it'll slingshot you to the the universe you're trying to go to, or or the person's body you're trying to take over, which you can also do if you first jump, is what they call it. So like to like the first thing that uh, Evelyn had to do to go to the universe where she's in a laundry closet <laughs> instead of uh, in the uh, sitting at a desk, she had to change her shoes. They had to wear the left shoe on the right foot. But then it gets weirder and weirder as the movie goes on. <laughs> uh, the second time we see women to do it, he has to like give himself paper cuts between each of his fingers ah shit yeah <laughs> and i'm like i'd like and it's like a whole thing right he's trying to give himself a paper cut and it's not working like every everyone in our theater was so like we, we were yeah. cringing so hard <laughs> like if, if you can't replicate that exact scenario you can't you can't jump if you do something weird like something else and then you try jumping you'll jump to a different universe yeah, but it's cool because if you jump correctly, we get cool action sequences. Yeah, so like the the, fir- the first Wayman jump, he just had to uh, chew on lipstick. Like that that yeah. was like, all right, there you go. And there's like another, another one where he just has to chew gum. L- later on, one of the last ones is uh, you had you had to put something up your ass. <laughs> and that leads to this this great like fight scene where um where Evelyn is trying to like like fight him off while getting. A dildo, like a butt plug, away from him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it's really funny to watch. What's it? There was another, what's another one? Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there was one where you have to, uh, she had to confess her love to Jamie Lee Curtis to jump to the hot dog fingers universe. Yeah, and it, <laughs> but it had to be, it had to be a genuine confession of love. So, like, at first, she's like on her hands and knees, like saying, Oh, I love you, and nothing's happening. And like, it had to come from the heart. And her husband's just in the background, like, watching, like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's, it's so funny. It's hard to explain that how the multiverse jumping actually works. You'll have to watch the movie. But it's it's a actually a really really cool concept. It is, yeah. And it, it's it's hand like again for how dumb it is, it's handled so well. They take it so seriously with the uh, <laughs> the, the you have to do something weird. Yeah, they, they they take it really seriously. What what is some? I'm trying to think of some other ones that they had to do. Uh, oh yeah, Wayman had to chew already chewed gum. Yeah, ugh. It's a lot of dumb stuff like that. And, like, it's cool because, like, when you jump, you basically, you, you keep your current body, but you gain all the memories and experience of this other universe. It's basically, like, a cheat code, like, you could just give you, like, anime powers for a scene. I, th- I think that's, like, the best, like, comparison I can make. Yeah. <laughs> it's like watching a weird zany anime. And when you jump to the, uh, to the other universe, you also gain the memories of the person's body that you took over? Yeah, so, like, there's one, there's one shot where, like... Jamie Lee Curtis, like, she has, like, a, a beer belly, kind of, in, like, the main universe. And when she jumps um, to, like, one of the one of the ones that Joy, like, like took over. Like, it's it's the one where Jamie Lee Curtis has, like, the circle on her head. Yeah. 
And she's basically like a, like just a, a slave. She like loses the beer gut. Like like her stomach like retracts. <laughs> and it's just it's it's a weird shot, but it was so funny. Oh, but there's there's it, it's 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 a really good movie from for how weird everything becomes near the end, especially in the last act. It's it's so weird, but it's so heartwarming. Because like beneath all this weird zany multiverse stuff, it's just like it's a story of uh, like a mother and daughter trying to reconnect and understand each other, and it's a story of a of a a, a wife and husband trying to like rekindle their their I don't want to say lost love because I think like it's it's never outright said that um, she doesn't love him anymore. She's just not happy. Well, who was the one that wanted a divorce? It was he did. He did. Yeah. He did. He wanted a divorce because not because he wanted to leave, leave her because she was unhappy, and then that becomes a whole thing. Yeah, because like the way the way uh, Wayman is like main universe Wayman is is um, presented is he's just like this self selfless weakling with like he has like no backbone at all. Um, he's just like this happy go lucky guy all the time, and he like he knows the situation is bad with the with the laundromat and with his marriage, but he's like he's hopeful, he's optimistic. Where she's very like nihilistic with her worldview, and they, it, it makes for an interesting contrast when there's like scenes of them just talking, especially after the multiverse stuff is introduced. Like when she straight up tells him, like, "Oh, like I was just having, I was just reliving memories of my life without you." It was amazing. <laughs> it was so and beautiful. He's like, like, what the fuck do you mean? And then he pulls like he's holding the divorce papers while she says this. <laughs> And, and and the thing is, she keeps going because like it beca- it goes from like a serious moment to like a joke where she's like, "Oh yeah, I was great. We never met. That I never moved here, and my life was amazing. I oh, I wish you could have seen it. <laughs> like it, it's it's fucked up, but like it's funny. And I think that's a lot of this movie. A lot of this movie is just like it's it's fucked up and it's weird and it's 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 like weirdly like sad, yeah. but it's also really funny. Like all the scenes with joy is just really sad. Yeah, yeah, so the, the the reason why Evelyn is going through all these multiverse whatever is because she's like she's the one from the Matrix, you know? <laughs> yeah, she she's the chosen one. She's like the generic trope. She's the chosen one that'll save the multiverse from the god that's trying to destroy everything. And and the god that's trying to destroy everything is uh a version of Joy. Yeah, a version of Joy, her daughter. There's this really cool like moral decisions that she has to do. Like, because she knows that the only way to save the universe is to kill her daughter, right, basically. But, and she's trying her best to avoid that situation. She, she's trying her best to save her daughter instead of outright killing her. Yeah, because, like, it's established by um by the old man, who, in, who in, in one universe is, like, just basically just a military dude. And it's established by him that, like, every version of Joy eventually becomes... This multiversal like supervillain, like like there's no version of Joy that doesn't end up going down that path, and and so like um, Evelyn's journey here is trying to trying to keep her daughter, but also also saving the main villain version of Joy as well. Like that's the goal. It's really heartwarming. It's just it's nice. I haven't seen a movie like like this like in a long time, and I think I needed it to see it. I think I needed a movie like this. Yeah, I haven't. I it's been a long time since I've seen one of those like. Gut wrenching, wholesome movies, yeah, yeah. Gut, well, gut wrenchingly wholesome. Like it's a weird statement, but that's how I describe this this journey. Because <laughs> it is, it is sad. Like it, when we're first introduced to main universe Joy, like like she she's gay and she wants to invite her girlfriend to this Chinese, like, New, Chinese, Year's Chinese New Year yeah. Chinese New Year's party, where like to introduce her to her to her grandfather and and to like involve her in her life, you know, like her family life and stuff. And the mom is like super against it, and she's like, "Oh my god, my father's old fashioned. Uh, what's he gonna say?" And she's also like a slave to her father, basically. Like she she lives to get his approval because he he uh, he abandoned her, right? And now that he's old and sick and has to rely on her, she wants to do basically anything possible to maintain his approval. So he she doesn't want her daughter to bring her girlfriend to meet him. Yeah, and that leads to a bunch of other like smaller arguments and disputes between mother and daughter and i think it's it's just like nice like it's it's a sad story but it's one i think i i kind of wanted to see you know like it's, it's been a long time and, and the way it's handled is super like graceful it's not forced it's not like hammered in i think it's just a nice like wholesome story 
these two learn to come to terms with each other, you know? Yeah, and I think uh, the ending of this movie is very... I, I like I I need like it, it it wrapped up the entire movie perfectly like everything that comes up near the beginning of the movie gets wrapped up at the end. There's not really any strings attached, and for people asking for a sequel, it's not going to happen. First of all, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't think a sequel to this is possible. It's it's not really possible with the ending that happened. Yeah, everything is tied up in a nice little bow. And like the the god of destruction, I'm just going to call it the god of destruction. The joy god. <laughs> or it's evil joy. <laughs> evil joy. Yeah, you know, evil joy. So the reason why evil joy is trying to destroy the multiverse is just because she, she realized how ins insignificant everything is. Because, okay, it's, okay, it's, it's weird. This is where the weirdness comes in. So she got bored one day and she tried putting everything on a bagel. <laughs> because, you know, the everything bagel, right? Yeah. But this is a literal everything bagel. There's everything in it. This is pitched as a joke, but like it becomes this big dramatic thing. <laughs> and that's how the whole movie is. If you walk into the bagel, you you become you basically uh become enlightened, whatever, quote unquote, and then like the universe you're in gets destroyed. Yeah, you you ascend, you be you become God. You you become part of the everything bagel. Like, and then there's this cult of the bagel, and like everyone who's a member of the cult, they have little circles on their head. And the these people are trying to that are in this cult are trying to find Evelyn because there's one version of Evelyn where everything in her life goes wrong, and she is the one that is going to fix the multiverse. And they're trying to kill her because they're trying to destroy the multiverse. And that's main universe Evelyn. The way they tell her this is so funny. It's like, you are, you are bad at everything. But because you're bad at everything, you have infinite potential. <laughs> <laughs> because you just try everything in hopes of finding something you're good at. And you're just bad at everything. <laughs> it's and it, it's, I, I, la I laughed. It was so funny. There's so many parts of this movie that's, like, given to you as a joke, but it's actual plot that's super important. That's that's why this movie's weird, because, like, everything is, like, presented as, like, dumb jokes. But it's 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 actually, like, super important plot stuff, and it's also, like, really, it could be really sad or really wholesome, but, it, it, it like, it plays on your heartstrings. It's it's a very smartly written movie. Yeah, it, it's super, super intelligently written, yeah. So... My my favorite scene of the movie. I'm just gonna like I want to talk about it because I've been meaning to talk. Just tell anybody about this scene where of the rocks. <laughs> oh, the rock scene is so good. <laughs> it's so it's good. actually amazing. Both scenes with the rocks are amazing. Like the the scenes that the like they're actually beautiful. It's just so Joy is one rock and Evelyn's another rock, and Joy explains how most universes are like this because there's only a like. In the grand scheme of things, there's only a handful of universes where humans are the intelligent species. So, and then there's some universes where humans don't exist, where or where inanimate objects have consciousness or whatever. And so the rock universe is just instead of everyone being human, everyone's a rock, <laughs> and humans didn't like build anything on the world. So the Earth is pretty much exactly how it was when the Earth was created, right? It's just rocks. Everyone's a rock with googly eyes. <laughs> no, only only Evelyn has googly eyes. Oh yeah, only Evelyn has googly eyes because she's the one. <laughs> she's the one. Yeah. yeah. Can I just say how like beautiful that shot is? It's just two rocks and it's a landscape shot of like this big, this big like mountain. Ever since the movie came out, I've been trying to find that that shot to put it on my MacBook because I want that to be the my background, but I can't find it anywhere. Yeah, as soon as that movie gets a home release. I'm definitely gonna like make wallpapers and use those as like for wallpaper engine. Yeah, and and then like the way the rocks speak, there's text on the screen, and the, and they're just talking about how like they're just having a very meaningful conversation about the universe and like what what really matters in life, and it's a beautiful scene. This scene comes back later near the ending, where Evelyn is trying to save Joy from killing herself. This is this comes back later when she's trying to destroy the whole universe, right? Trying to she she's trying to walk into the everything bagel, and the rock falls off the the cliff, and then Evelyn falls off the cliff, and that's like metaphor metaphorically that's like oh I need to save my daughter from 
destroying fucking everything and these two rocks are just these two insignificant objects but they're the ones that are giving these objects meaning right because we we write our own destiny but it, it also kind of plays into the like near the end of main universe have women enjoy a story where like they try to have like a like a heart to heart and have like some kind of common ground it's just like when when joy's leaving to get into the car at the end and and the mom's like, oh, you know, like I'll try to do better. I'll you could you could bring your girlfriend to to the party and this and that. And Joy just says like, like listen, like we're never gonna see eye to eye. Just let me go. Yeah. And and then at first Evelyn's like, yeah, okay, like sure. <laughs> but then she then she has this like this epiphany, and then we get the scene with like the rock between evil Joy and and Evelyn, and and she's like, no, like e- even if. Like there, there, we can't see eye to eye. There's like infinite universes, infinite possibilities. I want to try to make this right, you know, and and um, and they do. They 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 do have that moment where they they make things right, and it's really cute. And yeah, it's it's a the, the ending scene where okay, Pat Pat sent me a meme earlier where how every A twenty four movie has that thing where there's just like a shot of a character and then something else, and they keep like switching between them. Yeah. That happens here right before Evelyn's like. No, you know what? I'm your mother, and I love you. Yeah, and it's also the first time where Evelyn like actually gets mad at her, because like, the, like, their all their disputes happen because Evelyn doesn't want to try to understand her. Never, not never because of things Evelyn says. It's things Evelyn does, but she also doesn't. She doesn't treat her the way a mother would treat a daughter either. And and it's at that point in the movie where like you know what? if I if I want to have a relationship with my daughter. I can't just be wishy-washy and let her get away with everything. Because that's why Joy gets mad, is because, like, I don't want you to just, like, okay, well, now you can, I can bring my girlfriend, and now I can do whatever I want. Is I want you to be my mom. And then that's the moment where Evelyn's like, well, you know, I don't like that you don't call me anymore, and you only come around when you want money, or whatever. And, I, and then they have that moment where, like, they are mother and daughter. Yeah, because she, she gets that revelation, like, where she's, like, seeing herself in all these other universes, because now she's, like... She's attuned with the universe. She could just look into other universes whenever she wants, basically. When she has the uh, the googly eye on her forehead. Yeah. When she has the googly eye, she basically has... She's God. She has all the memories and all the the experiences of every universe she's in. Yeah, so she, she's looking at every universe that she's been to and then some universe that weren't in a movie. It's just there's, like, all these different universes. And she's like... No, I live in this universe. This one's like all those universes. Yeah, that that's all that's all well and good. But this is my universe, and I can't keep fucking things up. Yeah, this is my universe, and you're my daughter, and I have to, I have to make things right for the family. A lot of the movie, um, Evelyn kind of blames Waymond for for their problems, but like he's not. He didn't do anything wrong, you know. I think he 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 like he made a stupid decision when they were young. And they never like recovered from it, but he but he's not a bad person, and I, and she kind of blames most of the movie blaming him for everything. So when she's having the moment with her daughter with Joy at the end, she also has that moment with Waymond, where she's like, you know, I'm I, like, she kind of like apologizes and forgives him for what happened, and she takes responsibility for what happened as well, because they both had a hand in it, right? And then and she finally like like they 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 kiss and she tells him like I love you and stuff and it's 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 really heartwarming, it, it's such a heartwarming movie. It is a really heartwarming movie. And on top and then on, the thing is that heartwarming part is on is on under a a, a plot driven butt plug, <laughs> a plot driven butt butt plug, hot dog held fingers. in the hand of hot dog fingers. And then, like, having sex with hot dog fingers, and then you, you jizz ketchup and mustard. <laughs> yeah, at least they didn't go for the low-hanging fruit and make it mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were creative. But it was so weird, and they come from their mouths. Like, it's really weird. It's just, that's, like, the weirdest thing in this movie. Yeah, the weirdest thing in this movie is the hot dog fingers, and then, like, because they have to use their feet for everything else. There's a scene of Jimmy Lee Curtis playing the piano with her toes. <laughs> And all I'm saying is, uh, there's a certain director who <laughs> shall not be named uh, will be very happy with that scene. <laughs> uh, I love you, Tarantino. <laughs> when, please, please keep making movies. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna be so sad when his next movie is his last one. Man. Yeah. Oh my god. And we we have no news about that movie, anyways. Like, people are like, oh, it's probably gonna come out before 2025, but we don't know. 
We have to, we have to cover a Tarantino movie. Did we not? Have we never covered a Tarantino movie? Talked about covering uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but we haven't actually covered a Tarantino movie. Shit, we should cover Tarantino movies. <laughs> Tarantino's great. Uh, anyways, this is not a Tarantino movie. <laughs> this is a, a Daniels movie. This is a Daniels movie. There are a lot of different points of the, this movie likes fucking with you, but not in the same way that Christopher Nolan movies like fucking with you, where you're just he's just trying to make you confused. In for Daniels and especially in this movie, they they try to uh, they try to. Okay, I, I can't think of any better word. They're edging you for the ending. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, that's a good way to describe it. Because, like, there, there's a lot of points where you think the movie's like, okay, it's about to wrap up. Nope! Here's a new major plot point. <laughs> there's also, like, a joke credit scene, like, halfway through the movie that I thought was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, oh, the transition is beautiful. Or like, like, the credits start rolling, but then, like, the whole, like, the whole, like, cast and crew is names of characters in the movie. And then it pans out to another universe, Evelyn, who reconnected with uh, with women later in life, watching a movie in the theater. Bro, that that transition was phenomenal. That's oh yes, this movie better win best editing. <laughs> this has to be nominated for best editing. Has to be nominated for best costume design, best picture. Oh my god, this movie is so good. Best writing. The only issue. Best, best original screenplay. The only issue really. Is the special effects? Yeah, the CGI is pretty, pretty not great. There's like a, a running gag in the beginning of the movie. Not a running gag. But there's a joke that was made at the beginning of the movie that becomes a running thing. Or like instead of Ratatouille, Evelyn describes this movie called like like it's Ratatouille with a raccoon. Ratatouille or something like that. Ra- Ratatouille or something like yeah, or something like that. And then it be- it becomes a universe because she thought it. It ends up becoming an actual universe where there's there's a, another dude at the restaurant she works at who's who's being controlled by a raccoon and the raccoon looks like shit yeah there, and also the, everything in that universe kind of was like uh, that didn't really have to be in the movie but but there, yeah that's that's more of a joke like it just, it just exists as a joke yeah that's the only part of the movie where i was like that's pretty bad <laughs> yeah but and, like, the hot dog fingers look weird because like, i mean i'm, I'm like 90 percent sure the hot dogs are practical yeah and I don't like them. I don't like the way they wave. I don't like the way they, they sway in the wind. But the, the, like thing, the thing is, the hot dog universe is is important to the plot. But the raccoon universe really isn't. Yeah, the, ra- the raccoon universe can be taken out. She doesn't do anything with it either, like, like in terms of like copying abilities. The only thing she really does in the raccoon universe is uh, it's like she gets on top of the chef's head and controls him. And that's like the... Oh, she's helping other people. You know, that this is during the same montage where both rocks fall off the cliff. Yeah, she's able to help people. So she's helping him. Yeah, but that didn't really have to be in the movie. <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's cool that they, they made a joke into a whole universe. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, they make fun of her for it, too. Like, like Joy and Raymond make fun of her when she talks about this. Like, you mean Ratatouille, right? And, and she makes, like, this. she goes on this big spiel for, like, no reason, basically. Like, she clearly knows she's wrong. But she continues the bit because she doesn't want to look wrong. And then it becomes a universe later. It's so funny. Like, it's so... This, the writing is so good in this movie. Who wrote this? Hold on, you can see who wrote this. It really is a perfectly crafted movie. Oh, the Daniels wrote it as well. Like, CG being bad is like is like a mute point in a movie like this. Where everything else is so, so good. Like, the, the rest of the CG looks alright. Like, the... The everything bagel looks fine when when you're walking into the everything bagel like the the universe starts like breaking apart and like your body starts like morphing and looks like the the, the cg there looked fine i thought it looked fine the best the best effect in my opinion is like near the beginning when evelyn's just starting to figure out how to do the whole verse jump where like the screen breaks up into shards of glass and then you see three different universes in each shard right yeah and then there's also uh, they do that later because there's one universe where they paid off their debt and one universe where they didn't and the 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 whole like glass breaking is another thing there there's also a you know a universe where like the party happens but like uh jamie lee curtis comes back with a vengeance <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> yeah 
Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis is so good in this movie. Like, like she's such a talented actress. There, there isn't a, like I said it before, but there isn't like a single performance in this movie that's bad. They're all phenomenal. But like, man, Jamie Lee Curtis is so funny in this movie. She's in it for like a lot more than like for, I thought it was gonna be like a one-off joke, and she's in like a lot of the movie. She's she's our main character. I saw an interview with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis where she was like, uh, she was telling about how it was like to shoot the movie. And she was like, yeah, it was really cool, like, uh, being with all these, like, talented actresses. But then 20 minutes into the first shooting day, I have this weird fight scene with <laughs> with Michelle Yeoh. And I was like, God, this movie must have been so fun to, to, to shoot and to film. But at the same time, this movie must have been a fucking pain in the ass to edit. Oh, yeah. But, but like I, I mean I, I'm sure they had fun editing it too. Like like this movie just feels like it was a fun experience for everybody involved the whole way through. E- even when when like because because of how tight this movie is, like, there's a lot that the, like the production team had to put like put into it thought wise. And it, but like man, it must have been so fun. I would have loved to be a, a fly on the wall. Like I I wish I had a lot more to say about this movie, but it's I'm still pretty speechless about it. I I should watch it more. I should watch it again. In a couple of weeks, probably. <laughs> yeah, I, plan on, I definitely plan on watching this again. Like, this is a movie I'm going to recommend to people for a long time. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's, like, it's rated number one on, on Letterboxd narrative features. Now, is this better than something like, like The Godfather Part 2? Or, or better than... Parasites. Parasites. Or better than... Or is it better than, than some of like my personal favorite movies like Spider-Verse and stuff? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But this is one of the, the best movies I've seen in a long time. This is this is like an instant cult classic for me. I, th- I think this is going to be talked about by everybody in like like film bro community is going to be talking about this movie for an extremely long time. Yeah, I this is this is a this is a film for people who genuinely adore the medium. I I do think that there's enough here for the general audience to enjoy too, if you could get behind the wackiness. Yeah, uh, the 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 weirdness might be a bit too much for like. Let's let's take a family trip to the theater and watch everything everywhere all at once. No, that's a bad idea. <laughs> like I would go with like some of our friends. Yeah, I would I would go with with like a nice group of friends, you know, like the but you got to know these people, right? <laughs> they, they have to and they have to like know what kind of movies you're going to like like my friends know what kind of movies I recommend them. So I th- I think I could pitch this to them and they'd be like, "Yeah, I'll watch this with you." And like it, it helps that it's good. Like, it's not just, like, wacky and zany, and, like, that's all it has going for it. It's just, it's genuinely really, like, such a well-crafted story. And I think they're, like, like the, the whole family dynamic is something anybody could get behind. Yeah. So I, I, I do think, like, just, just please go, go see this movie. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, this is my new favorite movie of all time. I think, I, I personally think this is probably the greatest film I've ever seen. Might be the greatest film ever made. <laughs> It's it's so good, and like like I want to come up with like negative things to say. I can't but think I, of I, a I, single. I thing. can. I can. Like I just I just can't. The only thing I could think of is the raccoon looked horrible, but th- but knowing the Daniels, that might have been a creative choice. <laughs> it might have been intentionally bad. It, it might have been like like this is such a weird concept. Like, it's clearly a joke that we're gonna make it look weird. Like some part, some some part of me that wants to only speak negative might say that this movie might have been a bit shorter. It could have been a bit shorter, but that but then I'm like, yeah, fuck that! Like this movie uses runtime perfectly. There's not a single filler thing I can think of. Yeah, exactly. Like it is it is long and it feels long. Like when when you're like in like I was looking at my phone like okay it's been like an hour. Like it it feels long but it, it uses like there's not a single thing in this movie that i think aside from like the raccoon universe but like it's a joke whatever isn't used like using using the runtime effectively right right like it, it's it's packed there isn't filler it's just it's packed and you know, you know when you have like you know when you have like a good meal like a nice like a nice steak dinner and you're, you know you have the steak you have the potatoes you have the vegetables and like it's a lot it's a lot of food right but it's so good that like I, I'm okay with being a little stuffed at the end. You know, I'm okay with like I have to sit and wait for a few minutes before I get up. Might have to undo my belt because <laughs> the meal was so good. It was so filling, but so like worth enjoying that I don't mind being a little bloated at the end. And that's how I feel about this movie. Yep, like, it's long, but I'm happy. <laughs> 
This movie feels like you ate an everything bagel that literally has everything in it. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? That's a perfect way to close it off. I gave this movie... This was the easiest five stars I've ever given any movie. I also gave it a five star. We, we both like looked at each other at the end of the movie and we just gave it a five. <laughs> Like, there was no conversation. Usually, like, Lib and I, after like, we see a movie together, or, like, when we're rating a movie for a pod- to the podcast especially, we talk about our rating, right? Like, we'll, we'll discuss it a little bit, right? Or, like, why is this a four? Why is this a four and a half? Like, what did we take off points for? And it's, like, the first time we both just looked at each other, five stars, said nothing. Like, yeah, this is five stars. <laughs> like, later, of course, we talked about it, but the things we talked about are all the things we repeated in this <laughs> this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we talked about the movie, but like, we didn't, like, try to convince the other, or, like, like maybe this is, should be a little higher, it should be a little lower. Like, no, I think this is five stars. Easy. The easy five stars. I, I could not recommend this movie enough. Everybody should watch it. If you listened to this episode and you didn't watch the movie, we warned you before. Shame on you. Why didn't you watch it? But I think that's, uh, it's time to finish talking about this. I'm definitely buying the Blu-ray when it comes out, and I'm definitely oh, yeah, going to like go back to the theater probably to watch it. If, yeah, same. if this movie is in a theater near you, go see it. Yeah, we, we didn't mention that earlier, but this is a limited screening, at least where we're from. It's pretty limited. Maybe because of how popular it is, it's going to start like letting out more screen time, more showings. Uh, I could only hope because I think more people need to see this movie. I really hope this gets the recognition it deserves. I hope it makes back the money it deserves. It's just, it's just a great time. Please go see this. If you have seen it, watch it again. Yes. And also watch Swiss Army Man. It's definitely not as good, but you should it's watch it It's not as good, anyways. but it's, it's it's a good, like, like if you if you haven't seen it, then you want to know what to, to expect to get into this one. Yeah, Swiss Army Man's a good place to, to stop. I, I like Swiss Army Man, personally. Yeah. I thought that I, I, get, I have it th- at three and a half. Yeah, I'd probably give it a three and a half for a four. It's not like as tight as this movie, but it's, it's good. I think I think it's a fun taste of what this director has to offer. This also goes to say that the Daniels, the, the these two directors, are probably the most creative minds in the film industry right now. Yeah, they're crazy. They're insane. They're insane. <laughs> I can't wait to see what they do next. But like it, it, I think it's a creative creativity that this this like medium needs right now. I think a lot of big blockbuster movies have kind of fallen into the the Marvel trap, and a lot a lot of these big budget movies kind of feel the same. And this is such a breath of fresh air compared to like other other big movies that are coming out right now. Not to say I don't love my 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 Spider Man No Way Homes and my The Batman's and my my other movies of that nature, but this is such a different experience than what we've been getting in Hollywood recently, and I couldn't be happier. Well, uh, that's. That, that's it, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to move on to not hot off the presses, kind of, because uh, there's only one thing. Yeah, it was a bit of a slow week, so we're not really doing a hot off the presses segment. We're just going to talk about the one piece of news that was uh, made us both really sad. Uh, I'm sure if you're listening, you've already heard, but I'll let Lib, uh, I'll let Lib take it away. Yeah, so no- normally we were like, oh, thank God, nothing crazy happened this week. Only t- like when, when sometimes when only two or three things happen for hot off the presses, we're like, great, an easy segment. This is not an easy segment because the one thing that did happen this week fucking destroyed us. <laughs> so on uh, April 12th, Gilbert Gottfried unfortunately passed away at the age of 67. He was sick for, uh, for a long time. Yeah, we knew this. It's really sad to see him go. He, he was a big part of my childhood. I've been part of a lot of people's childhoods. He was the funny man with the funny voice who made everyone laugh. I remember watching uh, reruns of Hollywood Squares. He was on that show a lot. <laughs> do, do you know Hollywood Squares? I've never seen that, no. It's, it's, a, it's a game show where there's a bunch of... There's nine squares, and each square has a celebrity in them. And then the, the contestant, like, they ask questions. First, they, they, they have to do, like, a tic-tac-toe thing. There's two different contestants... And you, the, you, you pick a celebrity and then you ask them the question that's on the card and then they give you their answer. And then the contestant has to decide if they think they're right or if they think they're wrong because the, the celebrities might steer them in the wrong direction. Okay, that sounds like a fun game show. I may have to check that out. Yeah, Gilbert Gottfried was on that game show a lot. Uh, even uh, Whoopi Goldberg was on that game show a lot. 
Oh, I definitely have to check that. I definitely have to check that out then. Yeah, you have to, yeah, just watch up a look up a Hollywood Squares best best moments. Gilbert Gottfried also unforgettably was the parrot in Aladdin. Yeah, I, th- I think a lot of people will remember him as Iago. Um, that's definitely like the most recognizable performance to me. He was, you know, Iago in the movies. He was Iago in, in Kingdom Hearts. You know, he was around for a lot of my life, and it's it's sad to see him go because he was like I've seen his stuff on cameo, like he's just genuinely a really funny dude. Saw what you did, and that wasn't very poggers. Oh man, that man is gone. Yeah, that's all we have for this week. Yeah, that's that's literally all we have for Hot Off the Presses. I mean, like, okay, some for anyone who wants to pre-order that, you could pre-order the Batman right now, but that's not as important. (laughs) And they 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 said that. Disney said they're not moving forward with a second season of Hawkeye. I'm not sure. What? I didn't even know about that. Yeah, whatever. Like, I don't even care to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm so over the Disney Plus shows right now. I'm happy Moon Knight is good. If you want to hear a thought about thoughts on Moon Knight, and maybe we'll talk about that later. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just so over the Disney Plus shit right now that I'm, I'm not even interested in talking about Hawkeye. Not getting a second season. Like, good, good. You don't <laughs> deserve a second season. <laughs> Well, moving on, you know, you know what I am ready to talk about, Pat. I'm ready to talk about the film that I recommended you on backlogged last week. Yeah, you recommended me a movie. I recommended you Blade Runner. So tell us what you thought. So I have interesting history with Blade Runner. I'm not going to talk about it too much for reasons I'm not going to get into. That's always a fun thing to say for listeners, right? <laughs> I have history with this movie. I never actually finished it. I started it. i have not finished it until until this week, until this morning, at the time of recording. <laughs> I watched it this morning. I watched the the final cut. Yep. Because I, I after doing some... Because Lib told me beforehand that this movie has different endings depending on which one, which version or which release you watched. And there is a canon one that leads into 2049. So I watched the one that leads into 2049 because I'm very excited to watch that movie. I was excited to watch that movie before I saw this. So I was definitely going to watch the the one that leads into it, right? Yeah, so there, there, are, uh, there are three widely available versions of this movie today so there's the u.s theatrical release where the ending has deckard and and rachel driving off into the sunset together uh and then there's the uh there's the director's cut which actually has the same ending as the final cut the door shuts and then it's left to ambiguation that's not a that's not even a word ambiguity (laughs) ambiguity (laughs) ambiguation is not a word (laughs) it is now mark it down fellas that's a word now the only really big difference between the director's cut and the final cut is the director's cut uh i mean the final cut has better visuals and of like two more scenes that are not super important. They're just establishing scenes from the director's cut. Uh, the director's cut and final cut, they're pretty interchangeable. The, but it's widely accepted that the final cut, which was released in 2007, that was directed by Ridley Scott, is the, the version of this movie. But there's also the very first cut, where the ending is Rachel dies, I think? Yeah, there is an ending where Rachel dies. I can't remember which release was that. Uh, there was also the... UK theatrical release, which also had a different ending, but you can't find that release anymore because even when they screen it in theaters in the UK, whenever they like do a rerun, it's the US release. So yeah, this movie is a very, th- this movie has a very long history. But it's good. I, I, was, I really enjoyed this. I, I I do think it's a little on the the slow end, especially the first half. Oh, for sure. It's it's really slow. It's really like it moves at a, a snail's pace. Like it feels long, but I th- I think it's very interesting. If you like uh, sci-fi movies, I think there's definitely something here for you to enjoy. Uh, performance-wise, I I don't think Mr. Harrison Ford, uh, bless his heart, is the best actor. Me neither. <laughs> and he 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 admits this himself, mind you. Think he 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 does not care. But I think he's he's like he does a good job here. I'm looking forward to seeing him return in 2049. That's a weird trend with Harrison Ford movies, by the way. They keep, like, making sequels and reboots of shit that he was in, and they drag him back, like, 50 years later when he's a decrepit old man and doesn't give a shit anymore. I, I don't know why they keep doing that. Because, like, he's all, he also, like, demands some of the highest prices in Hollywood for his acting. Yeah, his acting isn't great. So, like, you know. 
I, I don't know, but, but I guess for this, I mean, I haven't seen Twenty Forty Nine yet, so maybe it's, it's maybe he does serve a super crucial moment. I will tell you, I will tell you, what Blade Runner Twenty Forty Nine is definitely Harrison Ford's best movie. I hope so, because I was gonna say like he's in like The Force Awakens, and I, I I don't think he's good, and I don't think he was necessary to return. Yeah. So I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. He's he's at least good in that other movie they brought him back for. Like I think he's great in Apocalypse Now, but again. Like I think, I think twenty four nine is the best movie. I remember reading somewhere that apparently people thought that he intentionally did the narration poorly for Blade Runner, like back in the day. Oh yeah, the narration for the original cut is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. People think he did like, he did it terribly on purpose, and he said he he says he didn't, but that's totally something I believe is true. Yeah. For sure. Because he just does not give a shit. Did you did you go back and look up uh, the scenes that had narration? No, I didn't. I, I didn't. I wanted to, but I, I watched the movie this morning, so like I didn't really have the time. You should. Uh, you should. I'm gonna show you those scenes one day, and I'll show you the. Uh, I'll show you the original cut ending. Yeah, I could totally watch the theatrical cut. I, think I might do that. I mean, the the theatrical cut is only ten minutes shorter, but like the the music is not as good in the theatrical cut because it got remastered for the final cut. Speaking of, the music in this movie is phenomenal. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. It's great. I I love like synth synth soundtracks and stuff like that. It's my second favorite story to do with replicants behind here. <laughs> I'm waiting for uh, for uh, Harrison Ford's character to be in in the, the next near game. Before we recorded, Pat said that uh, this is a prequel to Near. <laughs> yeah, because like, like, so what happens in Near, right? Is is he my... I'm not gonna get into it too much because it's it's long and this bit is is really stupid. <laughs> but like. Humanity, like, gets sick, and the only way for them to, to thrive is to separate the mind of the soul from the body. It's like the souls, like, go into, like, soul land until they're able to be put back into replicant bodies. I'm like, wow, it's just like this movie. Except not really, but the, the, the word replicant is there, so it's funny. I mean, to, to, to put it into perspective, Detroit Become Human was heavily based off of Blade Runner. It's really obvious in hindsight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it was the main inspiration for the game. Nier is not inspired by Blade Runner. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just I'm making yeah, a joke I know, because, I know. Replicant, <laughs> because replicant. <laughs> I gave Blade Runner five stars. I gave Blade Runner four stars. I rewatched it like this week and I forgot to log it. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I watched it uh, today. Very sleep deprived, but I, I finished it <laughs> and I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it. What parts of the movie didn't you like? Why'd you take out that one star? I just thought because of the pacing, I thought it was really slow, and and, and I wasn't really I wasn't really vibing with the beginning. That's why I took off points, and I'm because like as much as I wanna, as much as I know Harrison Ford is is shitty on purpose, kind of. It's still not like it's not always a fun performance to watch. <laughs> so right, there's one more thing I gotta recommend you a movie. This one's gonna be easy. I'm just gonna throw it at you because we were talking about it earlier, but I'm recommending you X Men. The first one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we we were talking about it off right before we started recording because I really want Lib to watch Logan because uh, Logan is one of my favorite movies ever made. It's one of my favorites. It's one of the best superhero movies ever made. And I feel like you know we made him suffer through the MCU. He watched the Nolan movies. Let's 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 get him to watch another superhero franchise. But mainly, I just want him to watch Logan. Logan specifically. <laughs> so. uh... What better way to make him watch those those old movies than to force him to? And if you don't watch if you don't watch X two in a timely matter, I'm gonna recommend you X two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I was uh after because uh, we're, we're still in school right now. After the semester was over, I was like, okay, day one, I'm starting the I'm starting the X Men movies. I guess I can start it earlier now. I <laughs> I don't need an excuse anymore. <laughs> I, I I would watch X One with you. I, I think X One's good. Good in the same ways. I think like I mean it's it's dated in the same ways. I think like Sam Raimi Spider Man One is dated. Oh boy. <laughs> it it is an, it is an early two thousand superhero movie in both the best and worst ways. But I, I think I think X One is good and X Two is good. And I I think you're gonna you might enjoy them, <laughs> maybe. But if you don't enjoy Logan, we're gonna have a problem. Okay, no, no. I I know for a fact. That when I watch Logan, it's going in my top 50. <laughs> Logan seems like it's up your alley. The rest of the movies, I, I don't think so. But Logan will be. Well, our, one of our friends, uh, uh, Dante, who has a YouTube channel, Dante Del Toro on YouTube, told me that I would 
probably really like Days of Future Past, but uh. <laughs> maybe. Days of Future. I, I like Days of Future Past a lot. Like whenever we get there, I'll totally watch that with you. But uh, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch the the men of the X, and most of them are women. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of this right now, but I'll leave with a a fact here. Get this, guys. Oscar Isaac is the only actor uh, in the Marvel universe that has been in all three separate universes. He was Apocalypse in X-Men Apocalypse. That's the Fox universe. Uh, he's now Moon Knight in the MCU. That's the Disney universe. I'm drawing a blank. Tw Spider-Man 2099 in, in Into the Spider-Verse. <laughs> There's the Sony universe. Yep, Oscar Isaac. What a cool dude. What a cool dude. He's a, he's a busy man. Fantastic actor. He does a thing in Moon Knight that really, really, was really, really good. I'll, I'll talk about it whenever we get to Moon Knight. Hell yeah. I'll talk about it off camera because I'm sure Lib and I will talk about Moon Knight at some point off camera. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, thank you all so much for listening to this this uh technical difficulty episode actually pat the, the buzzing went away like a after after we fixed it it was all it's, it's good of uh, fucking course it did <laughs> all he had to do was unplug the mic and plug it back in <laughs> oh, well if you like this episode and you want to check out the other technical difficulties that we go through make sure to <laughs> Check out our link tree, that's linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel, where you can find every other episode of this podcast, as well as the links to our socials and the links to Pat and I's letterbox accounts. Mine and Pat's letterbox accounts, that's how you say it. <laughs> where you get spot podcast spoilers. Woo! Everyone likes podcast spoilers. Everyone likes podcast spoilers. And make sure to tune in next week, because... We'll, we'll keep talking about movies like we usually do, because next week we're grabbing our first recommendation that we got a long time ago, uh, because in the link tree, you click on the first link that you see, you could recommend us a film or TV show. And once we launched that, a good friend of ours recommended, about, hey, recommended us V for Vendetta. So next week, we're going to be talking about that movie. We'll see all of you in a theater near you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.